food is big business in New Zealand. In the past 20 or so years, there's been a huge boom in the restaurant, cafe and fast food industries. Along with that boom has been a significant rise in customers' expectations. They demand food to be fresh, well prepared and safe. Modern food laws are moving towards emphasising that people in the industry take responsibility for providing safe and suitable food. Food operators in restaurants, takeaway outlets, cafes, pubs and clubs must be sure that the premises they operate from and their procedures are appropriate for their business. The public doesn't usually see this side of things, but they certainly know it when things go wrong. I was sick for about eight days, had eight days off work, ended up in hospital twice um, on a drip to rehydrate myself. I woke up feeling so ill one morning, uh, vomiting everywhere. I started with vomiting and then just feeling really weak. Um, spent a lot of time going between the toilet and it just wasn't good. But I just didn't really realise that you could get that sick from food. Um, it was terrible, vomiting everywhere. I won't be going back to that restaurant and I'll always be cautious when eating seafood. Eight solid days either on the toilet or vomiting into a bucket. It was awful. The FCP helps you consistently achieve safe food, gives you a great staff training tool, helps your staff know what to do even if you're away, and keeps accurate records that makes keeping track of purchases, wastage, maintenance and staff development easy. After all, a single bad experience for one of your customers can have a devastating impact on your business. So you owe it to them, your staff and yourself to manage your operation professionally. The FCP is made up of two parts. One is the food control plan itself, the other is a diary. Although they look big, there are fewer than 20 pages that you actually need to write in or adapt. In the first binder, the contents are split into four sections. Management, which includes pages where you can record all the core administration information about your business. There's also a brief training section, which tells you about training staff and shows you how to keep a training record. The next section in the FCP is called the basics, and that's just what it is really good background information on all those things that matter most in operating a food business like yours. Things such as perishable food, water supply, health and sickness, hygiene, cleaning and sanitizing, food labeling, pest and animal control and more. You probably know most of the basics but there are likely to be some that you've forgotten over time and some that your newer staff won't even have heard of. So the basics section is really useful and suggests how you can make sure that basic knowledge and operational procedures are followed using the FCP diary. The third section in the food control plan is all about serve safe. This is a really useful section because it clearly shows how to do things such as check the temperatures of food, how to defrost and the correct ways to store food. There's information on hot holding prepared food and reheating. Perhaps most important of all are the pages dealing with poultry. Eating improperly cooked or prepared poultry meat is a primary cause of foodborne Campylobacteriosis in New Zealand, so knowing the correct way to do it is vital. The last thing you want is for any of your customers to get sick because you didn't cook your chicken at the right temperature or for the required length of time. The fourth and final section in the plan is all about keeping records for such things as staff training, sickness, poultry temperatures, transporting food and more. You start by simply ticking boxes and filling in blank areas to fully describe how you do things in your business. If none of the options apply to you, you can create your own description in the blank spaces provided. Similarly, any of the standard pages that don't apply to your business can be removed and stored at the back of the folder. Next, you complete the cleaning and maintenance schedules, showing how often cleaning should be done and the frequency of maintenance on equipment, such as fridges, freezers and so on. In the diary, you note the chilling equipment you use for cold holding of food and record their temperature readings daily. Because poultry is one of the high-risk areas, there's also a section for you to create a time and temperature settings record for cooking poultry. And that's pretty much all the paperwork done. But the important thing is to make sure that everyone who works in your premises is trained and familiar with the food control plan. Because essentially, the information in it 
now becomes the food safety rules for your business. Again, on, you can see from your temperatures here that you've got a couple of high ones on Tuesday. The verifier's role, usually your local council, then becomes one of checking that your FCP is relevant to your business, that the way you operate your business conforms with your FCP, and that you're doing what your plan says you do. So it's a checking role where your processes and practices are checked rather than an inspection of every nook and cranny of your kitchen. Because you are being given more control over how you manage your business, instead of the local council taking a look around your premises for a one-off snapshot of your business, you now have an ongoing blueprint for running your business that applies on a daily basis. When you're confident that you're doing the right thing, it's better for your business, customers are happy, and you get fewer complaints. So, in summary, a food control plan is an essential ingredient for your business. You adapt it to suit your operation. You can use it both as a management and a training tool. The food control plan is a blueprint for daily operation and your local council only needs to check it's in place and that you're following it. Adding FCP to your business is a recipe for success.